Although helicopter designs were slow to get off the ground, airship technology was going from strength to strength, with the post-war era turning out to be a golden age for Zeppelins. Airship pioneer Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin died in 1917, but the Zeppelin Airship Company continued to manufacture giant airships. It reached the pinnacle in 1928 with the release of LZ-127, also known as Kraft Zeppelin. This colossus of the skies made its first transatlantic passenger flight on October the 11th between Germany and America. The 20 passengers, who included Hearst newspaper reporter Lady Grace Drummond Hay, landed in New Jersey 111 hours and 44 minutes later. The return journey was 71 hours and 49 minutes, half the time it took to cross the Atlantic by ocean liner. Drummond Hay was also aboard the Kraft Zeppelin when it embarked on a historic round-the-world flight in 1929. The only woman in the party, she sent back news reports as the airship flew across the Atlantic to Germany, across Siberia to Tokyo, then the first non-stop flight across the Pacific to Los Angeles. The final leg was a three-day journey, and the entire trip took 21 days. In future years, the Kraft Zeppelin made an exploratory flight over the Arctic and carried thousands of passengers across the Atlantic. It became the first aircraft to fly more than a million miles and had a perfect safety record. The American military also invested in airship technology during the 1920s. The airship Los Angeles was built in Germany as part of a war reparations deal and arrived in the United States in 1924. With its envelope filled with helium rather than hydrogen gas for safety reasons, the USS Los Angeles carried out test flights for the US Navy and tested mooring points on the floating airship base, the Patoka. The dirigible also helped calibrate East Coast radio compasses and made a landing on the aircraft carrier Saratoga. The US Army Corps built its own airships in the 1920s, including TC-3, a non-rigid blimp. In 1924, the TC-3 and a US Army Air Service Sperry Messenger made the first successful airship aeroplane hookup when the messenger docked underneath the TC-3. The term blimp was supposedly coined by Lieutenant Cunningham of the Royal British Navy from the sound made when tapping the balloon with a finger. The Army's tests were successful, but the project was abandoned, with only the Navy pushing forward with construction of rigid airships. Despite the catastrophic failure of airship R-38 during maneuvers in 1921, Britain forged ahead with airship design. The non-rigid AD-1G FAAX was a private vessel built by the Airship Development Company for advertising purposes. After several months of work in an old army airship hangar, the blimp made its maiden flight in September 1929. Unemployed men were paid to pull the airship in and out of the hangar using ropes, as no steering mast had been built. The first company to avail itself of the advertising opportunity was the Walter Wilson grocery chain. However, the AD-1 had a short life, crashing in Belgium the following year while advertising cigarettes. The pilot was unhurt, the airship damaged beyond repair. It was auctioned in 1931, with the gondola fetching two pounds and the 75 horsepower Rolls-Royce engine selling for 13 pounds 10 shillings. The engine found a new lease of life in a Whitley Bay speedboat. Also in Britain, the R100 series was being developed with the idea of using rigid airships as passenger and mail carriers from Britain to the far reaches of its empire. The government commissioned the Airship Guarantee Company, a subsidiary of the Vickers Armstrong weapons firm, to build the R100. At the same time, the Air Ministry started work on the R-101. The R-100 team included aircraft engineer Barnes Wallace and senior stress engineer Neville Shute Norway, later to find fame as the author of adventure novels. Working in the wilds of Yorkshire, the team faced many practical difficulties, from lack of skilled workers to icy cold weather 
and a limited budget. However, the engineers overcame the problems and came up with ingenious solutions, such as a frame made from only 11 standardized components fitted into a non-rectilinear framework. Wiring was color-coded for the first time. When it became apparent that customized engines would not be built in time, the team decided to fit six Rolls-Royce Condor petrol engines despite the increased fire risk. The R101 fitted diesel engines, which were much heavier. The Rolls-Royce engines included two with reversing ability to enable precise docking onto a steering mast. The R100 team was surprised to learn that none of the R101 engines had the capacity to reverse. But there were many inconsistencies in the R101 design. The Air Ministry changed the original design from a safety factor of two to a safety factor of three. This strengthened the structural framework while overloading the airship by 20 to 30 tons. While some of the design team's innovations were ingenious, such as ballast operated by a valve system, the Beardmore engine was unsuited to the airship and the fins, elevators and rudders were poorly designed and difficult to operate. Ultimately, it was overweight, leaky and short of lift. After the R100 successfully flew to Canada and back in 1930, the pressure was on for the R101 to demonstrate its prowess. Despite its many flaws, the airship was talked up by authorities, including the Secretary of State for Air, Lord Thompson, who said it was safe as a house, and scheduled its maiden voyage for October 1930. Lord Thompson and 53 other officials and crew boarded the airship for the planned flight to India. Sadly, the vessel crashed into a hillside in France during bad weather, killing 47 people, including Thompson. The tragedy marked the end of Britain's airship program, and the R100 was broken down for scrap and sold for less than £600. <laughs>